<laughs> Do you know, Chuck, no greater honor could be bestowed upon you. When I think of the millions of millions of people who live and die and who have never really lived, not real, they've never had a real thrill, not real. They've lived and they've died and they've wasted their life and they've wasted their time and it's a waste. But here literally thousands and thousands of teenagers call you Daddy Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's love. That's love. <laughs> sure it is. It's love. All right. Dwayne, and you have this great uh, newspaper. It, it's, uh, what is it? The Hollywood Free Paper. It's uh, an underground newspaper in which we tell people about Jesus Christ. And, you know, uh, a lot of people, you know, have got strange ideas about it sometimes oh, I know. when they first see it. <laughs> and, you know, in the book of Romans, the first chapter and 16th verse, Paul the Apostle is talking and he says that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation. And so it's not the articles or the cartoons, which we may have in the paper, and we have quite a few of them, but inside of each of the articles and the illustrations and the cartoons that we have in the Hollywood Free Paper, we have the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the power of God unto salvation. That's right. What the circulation? Right now, and we're down a little bit for the summer, but right now it's at 425,000. Which means... Come on, come on. I... Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you see, I, you see, I want him, you too. <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the Jesus movement, too. Praise God. I don't care what the world calls it, but uh, if you know Jesus as your personal Savior, if you've had that new birth experience, then that's what we're talking about. I want to go on record that I am one of them. <laughs> no. And Chuck Smith, dear me, the daddy of thousands. <laughs> <laughs> and, and millions of people reading uh, Look Magazine and reading Time magazine, uh, world-renowned magazines have seen your face. Your face is nothing <laughs> new to millions and millions of people, and yet millions of people have never heard your voice, have never really known what you've stood for. The same way with Dwayne. The same with these young people. Millions have seen pictures. But they have never, the news media has never allowed these young people to speak. And that's the reason we're here today. It's all yours. I give it to you, gentlemen. <laughs> Tell me about these wonderful Jesus people of whom I am a part. <laughs> Talk about us. Start it, Chuck. Talk about us. It's a movement that began about 2,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and we're sort of Johnny Come Lately's in it, but we're so thrilled. And this is nothing new. Oh, no, no. You, you see, that forgets <laughs> me when people call this a fad. It isn't a fad. It began way back there with right. Jesus, didn't right. it? Right. <laughs> That's right. Uh -huh. Turned on people for Jesus Christ. You know, it began. The book of Acts is full of it, you know. Just people who found that Jesus Christ was all that he said he was the Son of God, the Savior of the world. And he's not a myth. Oh, no. <laughs> a myth could not change all of these lies. That's right. That's right. That's right. A myth could not have changed your life. Know that. It takes the very power of the Son of the living God. Oh. It's a beautiful thing to see in a world that is very dark when you listen to the news today and you look at all of the things that are happening and we 
see the articles that deal with the young people and the problems, and we are living in a very problemed world, and there's darkness on all hands, but in this dark world, there's a brilliant light that's now shining, and it's in the faces of these people who have accepted Jesus Christ and the light of Christ coming through. And to me, this is the really the only hope in the world today is among what's happening right now with these young people being turned on That's to Jesus right. Christ. Not only the only hope for America, because this is worldwide. Worldwide. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> I'm so glad to be a part of it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Great. I look at you and think of, of the wonderful work that you are doing with your newspaper. And yet it, it's not really something that, uh, oh, we say the editor of the Los Angeles Times are uh, the, the, you know. I'm not really an editor. It just sort of happened. And well, it uh, hasn't just evening. been yes. the same way with all of us. It just with happened. We just all of a sudden found ourselves. You know, I think the important thing is to just open up yourself to Jesus Christ and allow him to work through you. And all of a sudden you find yourself doing something which you never knew you were able to or even have really the education or the capabilities of doing, but you just find yourself doing it. And it's happening today as people are just opening themselves to the Holy Spirit and he is beginning to work through them. So much is happening and we're seeing it everywhere just everywhere. And the man who stands back and says, well, we'll just wait and see what's yeah. going to happen. And he just waits. <laughs> and nothing and ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> we have and a, time's running out. We have a saying, find the flow of the Spirit and flow with him, you know. Amen. Just be yeah, open. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. be open. Uh -huh. I want to ask you something, um, Chuck. You're soon going to have me calling you Daddy Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're awfully nice, you know. Uh... I think you're nice, too. <laughs> you know why? It's because we love the same cheese. That's right. That's right. Now, with the millions of people who saw the pictures of you out in the waters of the Pacific, baptizing thousands of the youth. How many have you baptized? Well, actually, since when? Yeah. <laughs> we have about 500 a month that are being baptized, and so just figure how many months back you want, and you can determine how many have been baptized. But we've been going down there for about two years now, and it's just increasing and increasing. We started out with, actually, well, three years ago, we started out with 60 or 70 a week, and it's uh, just uh, increased on up till now. It's about 500 a month that we're baptizing down there in the I ocean. I know that well, this, whole, this whole movement is really taking the world. Oh, it's yes. taking the world. <laughs> right. All right. Now I want to ask you something, because millions saw the picture in our leading magazines and much has been done through the pictures regarding the immersion, the baptizing of these young people. In an eastern uh, city, I was to have been on a, a talk show, and would you believe it or not, the very first thing that they asked me, Catherine Kuhlman, what do you think about the youth? being baptized and, and what we saw uh, uh, of these young people out in the waters. What do you think about it? I told them, but now, Chuck, you tell them. <laughs> I feel that baptism by full immersion is a very important step in their faith. Many of these young people that you see have had rather sordid backgrounds, Catherine. They've been in drugs, they've been in prostitution, they've been in everything you could possibly think about. Baptism in the Christian sense actually signifies a burying of the old life. It's the end of the road for the old man, and so many times as I'm walking out into the water, I'll say to the young person, well, this is the end of the road. <laughs> We're going to bury all of the past. 
If any man's in Christ, he's a new creature, and they'll say, wow, far out, oh, let's bury it, you know. <laughs> I even had one young man the other day say, hold me down a long time, Chuck, I've got a lot to bury. <laughs> you know? How many of you young people, that's, that's exactly what you felt about him. Go on. Yeah. A lot to bury, that's oh, right. Yeah. Because that's what immersion means. That's right. First, there comes that wonderful experience, and it is a personal transaction between the young person and Jesus right. when he confesses his sins. Right. But it's an outward expression. Right, of what's happened inside. Of what's happened on the inside. Yes. And I don't, don't suppose any camera could ever catch that <laughs> wonderful glow on their face. Oh. <laughs> and that wonderful feeling on the inside. That's right. That's right. Chuck, what does it do to you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is so... They say, well, isn't the water cold, you know, and... Don't you get cold standing out there for two hours baptizing so many young people? And really, I haven't felt cold water yet. <laughs> I believe that. The glorious warmth oh, the of the spirit uh, comes yes. through. What, what has been some of their experiences, for instance, in, in when you're baptizing and when you're immersing them? Oh, it's just so glorious. It, it's hard to describe. In fact, I don't think you could possibly depict it in words. The beauty... The glory of the whole experience as the uh, beach is just lined with thousands of people singing the choruses and praising the Lord, then walking out into the water and the bearing of the past, and then when they realize that all of the past is gone, that it's all been buried, that God has absolutely nothing against them, the slate is clean, it's a brand new life now with Jesus. And not only that, even as the Spirit descended upon Jesus after his baptism, their hearts are open and they just receive the power of God's Spirit to live that new life that the Lord wants them to live. And it, it's indescribable. <laughs> and, and, and you kind of get converted all over again. Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> That's the truth. Well, is there any special chorus that they sing at a time like that that, that is, is most inspiring to them? Well, we quite often sing, and Jesus said, come to the water, one of the choruses that one of the young girls wrote, actually. Do you, do you know it? Yeah. Sing it for me just once, will you, right now? Come on, somebody start it. And Jesus said, come to the waters and by my side. I know you are thirsty, you won't be denied. You wouldn't change places with anybody in the whole world, would you? Never. <laughs> if they offered you a title deed to the whole world, Dwayne. We've got it. <laughs> <laughs> you know why we have him? We have him. We have him. We have Jesus. Did they just come to you? You have everything here. Right. Everything is here. Some have been on dope for years, right? Oh, that's very true. You'll hear some testimonies from these young people that they're hard to believe, really, but yet the grace of God, where sin did abound, grace did overflow. And it's so beautiful to see the changed lives and the changed world that is coming about because of these changed lives. And millions are wondering whether it's just a fad or whether they're just on another kick. Answer it. Well, actually, if it is a fad, it began, as I said, 2,000 years ago, you know. <laughs> 
And I believe, really, that the coming of Jesus Christ is so near that it won't have a chance to die down. <laughs> I think it's just going to increase right until the coming. That's right. I am certain that this is the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy when he said, In the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall That's prophesy. Right. And this we see. This we see. I'll go a step further. I believe that this is God's tender mercy. Yes. I believe that this is the last yes. of the youth generation before the great tribulation. Right. I believe that. That's right. This is the last of the youth generation. Before that time that the Bible speaks, where there will be such suffering upon the earth. But remember something. Whatsoever a man soweth, that must he also reap. Whatever a nation soweth, that must that nation reap. What the peoples of the world sow, they must also reap. And there's coming a time of great tribulation upon the earth. But there's never been a judgment from God without there also being a time of mercy and a time for repentance. Jesus knows the hearts of these young people. Jesus knows. I look in their faces. I have looked into their faces. Sometimes I think he's given me the privilege of looking through his eyes. And I see the innocence. And I see the hunger in their hearts. And Jesus sees far deeper than you see or I see. They're hungry. They're hungry. And we're living in a day of mercy, his mercy. I know very little about the religions of the world. I know very little about religion when it comes right down to it. But, beloved, I can tell you about the love of Jesus. I can tell you about the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can tell you about the grace of the Son of the living God. And every one of these young people can tell you about his grace, his love, and his mercy. They may know very little about the religions of the world, but they know his love. He touched he touched me, oh, he touched me, and all Perhaps the realm of faith is new to you, and you have many questions concerning it. Catherine Kuhlman pledges her personal and confidential attention to letters of inquiry. Simply address Catherine Kuhlman, Post Office Box 3, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That address again, Catherine Kuhlman, Box 3, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania.